my brethren, my loved ones, the children of my Heavenly Father, and those of you who need to come to Him, I say blessings. I first of all wish to say thank you for taking the time to listen to these devotions and to share them with others. I know that there are times that you feel bad when your friends, your loved ones, even your family members would have something that you sent to them and they don't see the importance of listening. I know that would make all of us feel bad. But the truth of the matter is, we do the same thing to the Lord. So don't let anything just keep you back from doing that which is right, and that is sharing with others. Norman Clayton, in his song, My Hope is in the Lord, taken from Psalms 31, 24, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you that hope in the Lord. In the second stanza, he said, no merit of my own, his anger to suppress. My only hope is found in Jesus' righteousness. For me he died, for me he lives, and everlasting life and light he freely gives. Thank God that he gives everlasting life. We are not deserving of it. But while we are here waiting on him, he wants us to do a work for him. And in order for us to do this work for him, we need to have the right attitude. We need to find out the steps that will take effect in our lives and help us to be revived. I shared with you in our last devotion that there are at least three steps that we need to take to begin with. The first one is to remember. I want to go back to the book of Revelation and read for you from chapter 2 and verse 16 and see if we can find the second step there and then give you the third step in regards to this. So what is the second step? Here's what he said. He said, in chapter 2, verse 16 of Revelation, Repent. Why should I repent? He said, Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Wow. This is not a brother down the road that we are not afraid of. This is not a neighbor. It is not somebody just with a threat. This is God speaking. And he's speaking to his church. And he's saying to his church, Repent. I else I will come unto thee quickly. Repent of what? Repent of that which is against him. When we speak of repent, what do we mean? What do we understand when we hear repent? To me, it is to have a change of mind. We need to change our mindset in regards to revival, in regards to our attitude to God. We need to change our mindset, change our mind. Our minds must be renewed. Oh, if we're going to live right, if we're going to do that which is right, we need to change our mind. The things that are just, honest, pure, lovely, things that are of a good report, if they be of any virtue, if they be of any praise, think on these things, and the God of peace shall be with us. The mind is that motorboard that controls the computer. It is the hardware that controls the computer. The mind controls the body. What we put in is what we will let out. What are we thinking on daily? If you think of it long enough, you probably will find yourself doing it. So let's have a change of mind. We could tell ourselves, I'm going to change my mind about this. But a change of mind will also bring about a change of attitude. Each one of us needs to stop and pay attention to our attitude, our attitude towards God, attitude towards the things of God. We need to stop and pay attention to our attitude towards this matter that we are speaking about revival. Have we reached to the place where we have said, if it comes, no, let's change our attitude. Let's have a positive attitude. Let's be encouraged. When someone sees us coming, they should say, there goes an encourager. People should love to be in our company. Our attitude should be of such that our light shine before men, that they may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Be sorry for where we are today. I'm speaking of repentance. Have a change of mind. 
have a change of attitude. Be sorry for where we are today. Yes, he said to us that we must remember where we were. But now where we are, we need to be sorry for where we are today and get to the place where God wants us to be. If we keep allowing the things to just keep going on and do nothing about it, it's like having a ground. You planted it, the rain came, oh, what you planted grew. But along with that, the grass grew also. And now we need to just weed out all the grass. When we were growing up, we would take a, we call it a scraper hole, and we would take that hole and we'll go to the ground and we would dig out the grass and mold the corn and mold the peas. And sometimes you would see the ground next to yours, the pasture. And that one, they would not have molded it as yet. And just what you planted is out there standing in yours with other clear land. And on the other side, it is covered with weeds. If you do not mold the ground, if you do not take out, the weeds will kill the plants. So we cannot leave these things in our lives stay there and say what happened. No, be sorry for where we are today. And when we find ourselves being sorry for where we are, we need then to ask God forgiveness. Because what we have done wrong is what we have done wrong to the Lord. Stop worrying about people. Stop worrying about what people may think if you do that, which is right. Be concerned of what happens to people when we do that, which is wrong. Ask God forgiveness. I guarantee you, that it matters not what you have done when you go to God and you ask His forgiveness, He will forgive you. We're talking about repentance. It means turn around. Be unsatisfied where you are. And then step two is to repent. And of course, that step three would be to return. In verse five of chapter two, Revelation, he says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of the place, except thou repent. That's what he said after repent, and do the first works. Get back to doing what God called you to do. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14 and verse 22, again the verse says, Turn, O backsliding Israel, said the Lord, for I am married unto you. I am married unto you, and I will take you out of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Look at verse 22. Return, ye backsliding children. I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for the Lord our God. In other words, what is he saying? Come back to where you were. Return to a daily devotion with him. Return to daily witnessing for him. We come in contact with people every day. Say something for him. Speak about his goodness. If you cannot speak, let his goodness show in your life. Don't let him down in your behavior. Don't let him down in your speech. Return to the Lord. Have that love relationship with your Lord. Return to accepting his will for your life. There are many people today that are fighting against the will of God. Return to loving him supremely. Nothing before him. Nobody comes before him. God, let God be number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Return to loving others. Oh, please return. Return to refraining from gossip, backbiting. Oh, these are acts of the enemy. Return to the Lord. God wants you to return. God wants me to return. And he said, I will take you back. I'll be back next morning. My time is up. And I'll share with you the effects of revival. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, though we have sinned, yet you would abundant pardon. Thanks for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. For we love you, we praise you, 
We thank you, we glorify you. And for this privilege to serve you, we give you thanks. For this is my prayer. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. God bless you. Please share with a friend. Please share with a loved one the good news of Jesus Christ. But let God revive you. I'm opening myself to him for him to revive me and to keep me revived. God bless you. Thank you for loving the Lord and for allowing him to use you. Have a great day.